Hello, I'm Heath from the UTSA chapter of HKN, and today I'm going to be talking about how you can install Python on your personal computer to replace MATLAB. So the reasons why you'd want to do this is MATLAB is a great tool, and it's provided to us free of cost while we're in college. But once you get out of college, many corporations um, and businesses out there aren't going to pay for the corporate license for MATLAB because it is quite expensive. And so it'd be good to have another tool in your toolbox that you can use to solve real world problems and also it's free. And this is where Python comes in. So MATLAB and Python have many similarities. Similarities being they're both interpreted languages, meaning that they run on top of a kernel that's going to interpret the actions being performed um, in a live way and allow you to run your code real time uh, as opposed to say C where you need to compile it first and then run it uh, in your terminal. Um, they also have differences where uh, being namespace mainly where MATLAB has a global namespace meaning you can call any function say sum dot product uh, matrix multiplication and it's going to know what you're talking about whereas Python you actually need to import those libraries in first and tell it what functions you want to use before you're actually able to use those. Um, so I'm going to show you how to go ahead and install Python right now. So the tool we're going to use to do that is called Anaconda. It's going to install Python as well as many of the scientific and matrix multiplication libraries that we're going to want to use to emulate MATLAB. So you want to go to just Google Anaconda Python or you can go to continuum.io downloads. Uh, go down here and you want to download um, the installer uh, specific to your system. They offer it for Mac, Linux, and Windows. Uh, go ahead and install uh, the latest version of Python if you have uh, the ability, unless you have a specific reason to install Python 2.7, um, you want to do Python 3. So once you get that installed, um, you'll go ahead and run what's called Anaconda Navigator. This is going to be the graphic uh, user interface for Anaconda. And it's going to pop up with a window that looks something like this. These are all the applications that are installed uh, in Anaconda right now. When you first open it up, you may not have uh, Jupyter, IPython, or Spider. So you'll, those are going to be the three main applications you're going to want to install. Spider being the one that we're going to use the most to emulate MATLAB. So once you install Spider, you can go ahead and open this up. What Spider is, is the, inter the IDE, the Integrated Development Environment. So this is going to be what you're very familiar with and what's going to give you that MATLAB experience. So when you open it, it's not going to look quite like this. What you want to do is go up to View, Window Layouts, and go to the MATLAB Layout. And then it will come up uh, just like you see here. And this should be very familiar to what you're used to if you've used MATLAB. Uh, so over here you'll have your file explorer outline. Up here is your scripting window. And down here is your kernel, your actual live interpreter. Uh, you have a variable window up in the upper right. And then your history, your command history. So as I mentioned earlier, both MATLAB and Python are interpreted languages, meaning they run on top of a kernel and can be interpreted in real time. So here's your, your live window and you can input math functions and get out an output uh, much like in MATLAB or you have your scripting window where you define your variables uh, put in their values like any other programming language um, and you can get your answers after you run your script um, so also one thing that's similar to MATLAB is the variable explorer so up here you can see your variables, their type, um, their size and also their value one similarity between uh, another similarity between Python and MATLAB also is that you don't have to define variable types. It automatically knows what type or assumes what type of variable you're declaring. Uh, as such, these are ints. If you said 5.0, um, that would turn into a float. And also, strings can be defined with just quotations. So now we've seen how to set up Spider to emulate MATLAB, but also some other things that Anaconda comes installed with is the Pi console, which is literally just the emulator kernel. So you don't need the full IDE. You can just go ahead and type it via terminal input um, and get your outputs. Another useful feature of Anaconda in Python is the Jupyter Notebook. So a Jupyter Notebook is a notebook or a journal 
running on top of the Python kernel. So this allows you to document your code as you're writing it um, in via Markdown language or just raw text, um, as well as saving plots in real time. So whenever you run a MATLAB plot, it's going to pop up in a window and then if you're running doing a lot of plotting and you need to go back to it, you're going to have a lot of buried windows uh, behind your MATLAB environment. But this allows you to embed these plots inside this notebook uh, in between your cells of code, much like you would a MATLAB cell or a MATLAB section, and go back and look at that um, for later. So this gets me into how to replace MATLAB with Python. So as I mentioned earlier, the difference between MATLAB and Python is namespace. MATLAB, everything is, most everything is a global namespace. You can call the sum function, you can create random arrays, you can create uh, matrices uh, just through the MATLAB input. But in Python, you need to explicitly call these functions or let Python know where you're calling these functions from before you can use them. So one way to do that, or the way to do that in Python is using the import function. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, Anaconda is already going to install the three main libraries that we need to do this, which is going to be NumPy, which is the numerical Python library, SciPy, the scientific Python library, and Matplotlib, which is the matrix plotting library. So another big difference between MATLAB and Python is the way that arrays and matrices are indexed. In MATLAB, everything is indexed from 1. So in a matrix you would have the upper left corner being 1, 1, the bottom left corner being NM for NM being the size of the matrix uh, rows and then columns. But in Python everything is indexed is a zero index. So the upper left corner is 0, 0 whereas the bottom right corner of the matrix would be N minus 1, M minus 1, N and M again being the size of the matrix. So in MATLAB, if you called a matrix of 1s, 5, 5, it would give you a 5 by 5 matrix. And the way to iterate through this matrix would just be to 1 to 5, 1 to 5, and that would give you all 25 values of the matrix. So Python, you can do the same thing. You just have to access the, the namespace NumPy, but the functions between NumPy, SciPy, and Matplotlib and MATLAB are actually very similar. Once you declare the, num the NumPy namespace, a lot of the functions are going to be the same. So then you just declare the ones, and this will give you a 5x5 five five matrix of ones. And then you can slice through it, but you need to remember that it's zero indexed, so you have to start from 0 to 5, 0 to 5. Um, now, this can be a little confusing and a little tricky. So you declare it a matrix, 5x5 five five matrix and you sliced it from 0 to 5, 0 to 5, but if you try to call the index 5, 5, it's going to give you an error because the index is max out at 4, 4, because as we set up here, a Python matrix is indexed at 0, and the max index is n minus 1, m minus 1. So the thing to know here is that when you are slicing an array in Python, or a matrix in Python, it doesn't slice to the last indice. So when you say slice 0 to 5, it's actually going to slice... 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and stop at 5, not actually slicing 5. So that is the one thing to know uh, when dealing with py Python arrays. Um, so you can also generate um, just a regular array, just using NumPy array function. So unlike MATLAB, where you can just declare brackets and spaces for your arrays, you actually do have to physically declare an array, and it does need the uh, commas between indices. But other than that, the commands are very similar. Dealing with strings in Python is very simple. Um, literally, you can set any variable equal to a string, either double quotes or single quotations. Um, similar to MATLAB, you can de declare how many digits to print for your, uh, your variables using the percent function. Um, and then giving your variable after a percent sign after your print statement. And then in Python, it's literally, it's just print. You don't need the f print f or the s print. You just say print, and it will print out your variables. So it looks like that's all the time I have for today. I thank you for watching, um, and I hope you check out the other videos on our channel. Thank you.